Hello, I'm Bill LeMay, and thank you for watching Community Matters. We hope you'll continue to watch as we discuss issues facing our community and provide you with the resources and information needed to find solutions. We all know the importance of staying active and supporting our community. Today's guest has dedicated himself to both, Pernell Edwards. He's the owner and operator of Goombe Raleigh Durham Social Sports League, and he's here with us today to talk about sports and fundraising. Pernell, welcome to the show. Good to see you, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, before we get into sports and the fundraising, do you mind sharing with us who you are, get a little background on you? Sure. Um, well, as you stated, my name is Pernell. Um, I graduated from Shaw University. I um, graduated with honors, um, magna cum laude. Um, and so, yeah, I have a passion for sports, and that's why I'm here today, sports and fundraising. Oh, that, I mean, you, you, it's always fun doing something you love, right? For sure. <laughs> a lot of us have passion for sports, but we're not very good at it. <laughs> but um, I, I know a lot of people like to play and stay mm -hmm. active and be a part of things. So tell me a little bit about what a social sports league is all about. What, what is it that we're talking about here? Okay, so a social sports league is where people can come together and meet new people, make new friends. That's the social aspect of it, while also playing sports. So that's what a sports, social sports league actually is, just people coming together, making new friends, making connections. You could meet someone and you, they could be a doctor or a lawyer, just in that casual conversation, you, you meet them and you make that connection and that connection goes a long way. So it's just that social aspect of just having fun and playing sports and meeting new people. Well, that's cool. And usually there's a bar associated where I come from up in Wisconsin. I was always <laughs> drinking. But uh, is that essentially why you set it up? Was uh, because uh, you wanted a social network or is there something more here? Well, a little bit of social networking, um, yes. Um, but really, it was my passion has always been there for sports. Um, it started um, some years ago. started off as a volunteer at a YMCA in Greensboro. started off just coaching kids. And then I'll, I've always been into sports as in starting my own sports teams, whether it be flag football, dodgeball, kickball. I've always been, you know, hands-on when it comes to sports. So when I moved to the Raleigh-Durham area, I still was hands-on, still volunteering, coaching kids and stuff like that. But, you know, my passion, once I finally graduated with my recreation management degree, that's when it really opened my eyes. You know, my passion for sports, I wanted to kind of bring it to life. Okay. Now, and you talk about your passion. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and it sounds like you really like sports, mm -hmm. but is there something more to it? I mean, it sounds like you mentioned kids, for instance. Mm -hmm. Is it what sports can accomplish? Is that what drives you here? Yes. Um, so as it relates to kids, um, I know a lot of kids, they don't really have a lot of people they can turn to. Some kids don't, you know. So with kids, it kind of helps. It gives them an uh, avenue to channel that energy. It could be, you know, they could have a situation that's not going well in the household, but they channel that energy when they come and play sports, you know. So that's why, that's why I stepped into that role of volunteering and helping kids, you know. I just saw some kids I knew that were going down the wrong way, so I tried to just show them a different way. Well, now, Goombe, mm -hmm. um, where does that come from? And tell us a little bit about that. So Goombe has actually been around since 1988. Oh. So it started um, with a gentleman named uh, James Godwin. He's actually from the Maryland area. Um, so Goombe has been doing sports and adventures since 88. Um, I believe they ventured over into more of the tournament style of sports in 2005. So we have an outlet here in Raleigh, Charlotte, and South Carolina as well. Now, what kind of sports are we talking about? Um, generally anything. It could be kickball. We primarily do kickball, but kickball, flag football, dodgeball, volleyball, anything that's pretty much sports related. Well, how does, how does somebody like me, who's not great at sports, uh, if I want to participate, how do I participate? Maybe I want to get my own team together. Can I do that? That's a great question. So the only thing you would actually do is just visit our website, sign up as a free agent for any sport. Really? Mm -hmm. So I don't have to have like 10 friends to come along with me? No, you do not. That's the main thing. That's the best part about signing up as a free agent. You actually get to meet people that you've never met before. That's the part of the networking. Well, uh, I know we talked a little bit about kickball, and just for the folks who might be watching, what, what kind of sports are available right um, now that they might be able to participate? Right, so as of right now, the only sports that are available are just kickball. We're actually starting our kickball league in April. We're actually starting that April the 11th. So after that, we're hoping to actually run into our flag football league. Now, I, I imagine COVID probably 
put a curtail somewhat on what was, you could and could not do. Right. Um, but the thing that I think is pretty cool about this is if you're somebody that got picked last on the team in mm -hmm. high school, you can be a captain of the team. In other words, it's open to everybody. I mean, what, what kind of groups are we talking about? Age groups and, and skill levels. So yes, it is open for anyone. I think that's where a lot of people get kind of confused at. I think when they think of sports, they think like you have to be very athletic. You really don't. Like you said, if you were picked last in high school or college or wherever, it doesn't really matter. You know, you can be the captain of your own team. It's, for me, it's more about having people come in and have fun. So we accept the ages of 18 and up. Beautiful. And now more than ever, getting out and getting active. It's getting harder to do that. This Very. is a great alternative. All right, well, after the break, we'll be back with Pernell to discuss the mission of RDU Sports Foundation and a whole lot more. So I hope you'll stick around. Welcome back. Today, we're discussing social sports and fundraising. We're back with Pernell Edwards, who wears many hats, and now we're gonna be discussing RDU Sports Foundation, of which Pernell is the co-founder and CEO. You're a busy guy. <laughs> Tell me about this uh, sports foundation. What is it? So yes, um, so me and a partner of mine, um, Tamara, who actually met her in 2019. I met her while we were actually volunteering for um, Rivals which is um, a fundraiser to actually help raise money for the Alzheimer's Association. She and I came up with this idea of uh, coming up with a sports foundation so we can actually raise money for different charity events. So it could be for cancer, it could be for Alzheimer's, um, really pretty much anything. So we wanted to tie in sports and doing those events, but also raising money for different awareness programs. I mean, that's kind of a unique idea, it really is. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these charities, I think, don't they have that fundraising arm to it? What makes your service so much better for them? Right, so they actually do. But with us, people, t people when they're playing sports, you know, they're, they're, you're giving them that competitive side of still playing and competing in sports while also actually having them donate to whatever cause that you're actually doing. So they're donating to a cause while you're selling them that aspect of you know, being, still being competitive in whatever sport they're doing. It could be a kickball tournament, flag football tournament, dodgeball, but they're donating that money to give to whatever cause it is. Now, you and your co-founder, I, I get it, it was a great idea, but why even follow through on something like this? I mean, if I understand it correctly, uh, everything that is raised goes right to the charity. Correct. So, so explain yourself, sir. Why, why would you do something like this? So, uh, great question. So, um, it all started with an idea I had in 2019. I had a kickball tournament called Kicking for Cancer. Um, kicking with the number four, cancer. Um, I started that event because I wanted to raise money for um, a cancer um, awareness. I actually have four family members in my family passed from cancer, so that's where the number four actually comes from. So, me, I wanted to either give it to a society or an organization to help them with their you know awareness or however they want to use the money or just donate it to maybe a family who's actually in need of it you know so right. that's where it actually came from so it's not about me gaining something from it what I really gained from it is just the, from helping people that's what I gained from oh, it. so it's a personal thing with it's you. a personal thing now for the charities um, because you you're specializing in, in sports events mm -hmm. sporting events that's something most charities probably, other than maybe a, a marathon of some sort, they don't generally get into. So what do you offer those folks that they probably aren't even aware they, they need your services? What do you offer them? Uh, let's say Spills Charity. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have a big uh, funding event for whatever. I come to you, what mm -hmm. is it that you, you bring to the table that I can't bring to the table myself? Ah, I think it's a lot. I really yeah. do. Okay, great question. Um, so let's say if you did actually want to put on a fundraising event, a sporting fundraising event, but you actually don't know the resources of how actually going by to do that. So what you, what you could use the RDU, RDU Sports Foundation to actually help put on your event. So what we do, we use our resources that we have gathered and we actually help you, I guess you could say, maximize on your fundraising event. There's a lot that goes into it though. I think for the viewers so they understand, mm -hmm. And there may be people out there who could use fundraising. It's not as easy as just saying, hey, show up on Saturday, is it? <laughs> There's a lot that goes into Let's say you're putting on a, uh, a kickball event, for mm -hmm. instance. What goes into something like that? Great question. So what goes into um, that is 
a, a lot of variables. Um, you have to think about things like, it's little things that people don't think about. You know, you have to have an insurance, you have to have an insurance policy for a venue. Um, you have to first find the venue. You have to lock in the venue. Once you lock in the venue, then that's when you go into the insurance and things like that. So it's really a lot that goes into it. It's not as easy as people think, you know, but luckily for us, we've made ties and connections with people in both Raleigh and Durham. We've made connections with people in the Durham Sports Commission and the Greater Raleigh Sports Alliance. Well, and, and that I think is really important. Now, where do you see this all going? I think it'll probably be much bigger than it is once COVID's out of the way, but what, what do you see down the road? Um, what I see down the road is people um, who definitely want to come to us, maybe, you know, like I said before, they don't have any clue how they want to put on a charity event, but they want to do, make it a sports connection related, where they softball, we can make it happen for them. If it's kickball, we can make it happen, flag football. So I definitely see us using the information we've gained and learned and the connections we've made to start putting on different events to help people raise money. I think that's awesome. And if you are out there and have his services, you know, he's got a website. In fact, don't go anywhere because we'll be back with Purnell and uh, we got a lot more to talk about. Stick around. Welcome back. Purnell is back with us to discuss some upcoming events and uh, fundraisers, which is always kind of exciting. I appreciate you sticking around. Let's talk a little bit about... Um, I, let me start with this, because why is sports fundraising, this aspect, which I, I just think is so cool, mm -hmm. why is this something that charities should really think about, and what are the advantages that maybe they haven't thought about? For me, it's more so of people getting that still, they're, they're still getting that competitive edge of wanting to compete for something, you know? That's why I like doing it tournaments related, you know? Um, you're still coming and getting that feeling for competing for something while also donating for a cause. So you're paying for a tournament, yes, but the money that you're paying for the tournament is actually going towards a cause. So we try to make that connection. You know, people have fun when they come to sporting events, you know? You get the chance to cut loose, I guess, from a stressful work week or stressful life, you know? So by coming to our tournaments and competing, you're just letting loose while also having fun and donating to a great cause. Can it, can it be more attractive maybe for folks who maybe, you know, aren't up for running a marathon, which mm -hmm. they, seems to be the predominant way a lot of people raise money and there's nothing wrong with that, but mm -hmm. somebody who would rather play kickball, for instance, mm -hmm. is, is there something to that? Um, yes, uh, it gives you that, I guess you could say it gives you that childhood feeling again of playing sports. Yeah. Uh, definitely gives you that. You don't have to be the best player in the world just to come out and kick for a cause. You know, it, you're just really out there and you're just having fun and you know you're out there doing it for a, uh, you're doing it out there for a good aspect while you're doing it, a good reason why you're doing it, I guess you could say. In fact, you have uh, some upcoming events. I think one is kickball. You mentioned it. What's mm -hmm. that all about? When's that, what's happening with that? Great. So we actually have a kickball tournament on um, August 28th, 29th. Um, so how, what we're doing with that is we're tying our sports foundation into that. So any money that's donated from that, a, a portion of the money that's raised from the tournament, we actually put back into our sports foundation so we can help put together um, different sporting events for the foundation. Oh, I got you. Mm -hmm. it, I, I see you got a two-day kickball tournament. Is that mm -hmm. what it is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, two-day kickball tournament, August 28th, 29th. Uh, we do all ladies and we do co-ed. Oh, cool. So how do you participate in something like that? Easily. Just sign up on our website. As easy as that. Easy as that. Another event that's coming up is flag football, mm -hmm. which is awesome. It really is. Tell us about that. So we're actually working with the North Carolina um, Olympics. So it's the Body Armor State Games of North Carolina, as I stated, with the North Carolina Olympics. And they're actually trusting us to put on the first ever adult flag football tournament. It's a five on five event. Um, we're, offering, we're offering four different formats and um, it's at the WRL Soccer Park here in Raleigh. I'm just grateful to be a part of it. Um, as I said, it's the first adult flag football tournament for the state of North Carolina Olympic. That is so exciting. Now, sponsorship opportunities, because this, I think, is an awesome idea and a good cause. Are there sponsorship opportunities for businesses out there? Yes, there are plenty of um, sponsorship opportunities. We're actually in the process of updating our website, getting a sponsorship link um, added today as we speak. <laughs> oh, all right. Mm -hmm. So feel free if you're at home right now and want to participate. And how about if you're an individual and you want to volunteer, you need a blind ump or ref? 
<laughs> I can do that. We're actually always looking for volunteers. So yeah. we're actually looking for volunteers now that's willing to help out with our kickball league that's going to start in um, April, April right. the 11th. Um, we're looking for volunteer referees um, and free agents and coaches as well who actually want to come out and play. All right. Well, this is, uh, as you put this all together, this must be a wonderful world for you because this is exactly <laughs> what you want to do with your life. Have you had an opportunity, and I know it's been tough with COVID and that, but uh, I know you have had some fundraising opportunities with uh, folks. What's that like for you to see, uh, you know, that aspect of what sports can do for, for a good cause? That's a great feeling, to be honest. You see how much um, money you've raised, and then once you finally get to that end, it's, the starting point is always hard because you have the events leading up to the end, pretty much. So, you know, getting it started is the hard part, but the joy of knowing and seeing how much you've raised and what it's going towards, that's what it is for me. For all of this, if you want to mm -hmm. sponsor, you want to participate, mm -hmm. if you're a charity, where do they go? Easily. You just go to our website, um, www.gombayrd.com. That's G-O-O-M-B-A-Y-R-D.com. Mm -hmm. All right. Wow, what a pleasure. It's Thank a great you. idea. I'd, uh, I'll start doing my stretches. <laughs> I'll be out there soon. Thank you for watching. We hope you've enjoyed today's show. If you have any questions or you would like to know more, please visit our websites at RaleighCW.com and MyRDCTV.com. I'm Bill LeMay. Thank you for watching Community Matters. We'll see you next week.